Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Uh, occasionally you get a fight that ends in such a bizarre way. You go, what the hell just happened? What, what was that? What, did I miss something? And then you sort of watch it back and you still can't really fathom it. Well, such was the case when Rafael Espinosa um, stopped Rabisi Ramirez in six rounds. This was in defense of his WBO uh, featherweight title. And he was facing the man that he won it against um, almost a year to the day, I think it was. Uh, December last year. Now, Espinosa uh, is undefeated. He's now got 26 wins in uh, out of 26, no draws, um, 22 KOs, and he is six feet tall. Um, six foot one, actually. I think, he's, I think he's a little bit more than, more than six foot tall, six foot one, roughly, for a featherweight. So he's a collection of limbs tied together in the middle, a very front-footed, aggressive guy, as you can tell from the KO percentage, uh, from Mexico, from Guadalajara. Um, Ramirez, uh, with this defeat, this is his third defeat. He slips to 14 wins with um, three defeats. That This was his first stoppage. And essentially, he quit. That's really the only way you can put it. He, out of the blue, he just seemed to quit. He's, he's also 30 years of age, five foot six, so he's about seven inches shorter than... Espinosa, Southpaw, whereas Espinosa is orthodox. But what happened in this fight? Um, the Cuban guy, all sorts of, as you would expect, you know, beautiful skills, crafty, very high ring IQ. He was doing well. Um, and in the first fight, if you remember, a year ago against Espinosa, it was give and take. Uh, Rabisi had um, Espinosa on the floor in the third round. Espinosa came back and he sort of eked out. Um, it was a majority decision. Could have gone either way, but um, Ramirez was was dropped in the final round, which sort of punctuated the win in a sense for Espinosa. He kind of got his own back on in, in the knockdown uh, in the knockdown stakes. But it was a very close fight, and this was shaping up to be another very close fight. Now, in the early rounds, Ramirez, despite being over half a foot shorter was the one, I mean, he's, he's fighting on the back foot, Espinosa coming forward like this praying mantis, looking at, looking for its prey. Um, but Ramirez was handling it, you know, uh, southpaw stance, lovely counter with the backhand, um, straight, straight uh, punches threaded through, some great hooks going in, southpaw hooks from Ramirez as well. <clears throat> he was only landing single punches, but he was, and he was moving an awful lot but he was certainly containing Espinosa, who wasn't letting his hands go nearly enough. Now, this changed in the fourth round because Espinosa suddenly seemed to wake up. Um, he, may, he may well have lost the first three rounds. I mean, you can certainly make, make a case for that. Um, but suddenly he came out with sort of renewed vigour as if someone had flicked the switch and the engine was running and off he went straight after Ramirez. And Ramirez found himself having to move an awful lot more than he was doing. Um, actually, this was, was this the fourth or the fifth? I think this was the fifth round, actually. So, yeah, the first four rounds, Ramirez was doing really well. Yeah, it was the fifth round when suddenly Espinosa just seemed to spring to life. And he was using those long levers, um, you know, almost punching as he was walking in, as he could afford to do when you've got someone who's so much shorter and has got a much shorter reach. He was punching as he was as he was coming in, Ramirez suddenly went from uh, constantly looking for the counter punches to kind of, you know, hang on a minute, I need to be a bit sort of uh, defensively cautious or reticent here because, you know, uh, um, Espinosa, I can feel the weight of his punches. You got that feeling. And weirdly enough, even though uh, Ramirez is, you know, Half, over half a foot shorter than Espinosa. Espinosa was the one who started a bank of the body. Um, Ramirez did fire a few body punches, but you would think with a guy in front of you who is literally you're looking up at him, the torso is is probably the main target. But but no, it was it was Espinosa who was firing to Ramirez's body, and you could tell he didn't like it much. He did not like it much. Now there's a little bit of controversy. Uh, regarding uh, some tactics used by Espinosa, because in the prior to this fight, Ramirez and his team said that Espinosa is very fond of using his forearms and actually following through in, with punches with the elbow. And they spoke to the referee, and I think they spoke to the 
commission about this and yeah okay you know we'll, we'll deal with it let, let the referee do his job blah 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 well after the after he quit so dramatically in the sixth round Ramirez would claim that he was clipped twice by elbows on the eye on the right eye in the fourth round not the sixth round and I'd have to go back and watch the fight but I didn't actually notice this um I can. You could definitely see that Espinosa, when when they came up close, was using those long levers to push him off, which is not not legal. But actually elbowing him, I didn't see that, and I don't think that the commentary team or the the guys working the uh, working the footage, you know, picked up on anything. There were no clips between rounds of that happening. There was one where Espinosa was pushing with the forearm, but in the sixth round, having having really been on the back foot and taken some some heavy duty punishment in the fifth round he wasn't shaking he wasn't wobbled Ramirez but you could tell he didn't like it at the I mean, it couldn't have been more than I mean it must have been like 15 20 seconds into the sixth round Espinosa landed a uh again orthodox stance landed the backhand it was basically a right cross uh clipped uh Ramirez right on the eye he held his hand up, turned sideways, and just walked to the walked to the ring. Well, walked to the ropes at the side of the ring. He just walked. No, no more, no more, no more, no more. And the referee immediately jumped in and stopped the fight. And everyone was like, "What the hell's going on here?" Um. Now he would say in the fourth round, "I got, I got elbowed." I, and he, he said in this post fight interview, he was he was smiling and he did, you know, I'm sure he did care, but he was trying to put on a brave face or maybe blag it. He said, "Look, I." I I spoke to the referee about this. He wasn't protecting me. I've got, I, was, I had double vision in the eye. And in fairness, there was swelling below the eye and above it, which looked like he, well, he'd obviously been hit with something. It looked to me like punches, but he's saying an elbow or a forearm. Uh, he said, I had double vision. I couldn't, I couldn't see out of one of my eyes properly. And I have to err on the side of caution. To, I'm paraphrasing what he said. Okay. So, yeah. It is a boxer's right to do that, but of course, if you quit, you know people will cast aspersions at you. And without a shadow of a doubt, he did quit. He did quit between the fifth and the sixth round. He was speaking to his corner, and I don't speak uh, Spanish, but he was. He seemed to be you know, nodding, and and he was talking to them. As he may well have been. If you, any of you guys have seen this fight and you speak Spanish, let me know what was said. But he seemed to be saying. You know, I, I, I'm having difficulty, but yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And then when the when the sixth round started, within like I say, 15, 20 seconds, he quit just out of the blue. Really odd ending. And Robisi Ramirez has always been someone who's highly highly emotional because if you see his interviews, he talks about when he lived in Cuba. Um, he now lives in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. But when he lived in Cuba, you know, he was an Olympian. He won the gold and. And he, the way he was treated was so poor and he was, you know, he misses his family and all this. He's a very emotional guy, very emotional guy. So I think it, when you're like that, when you sort of run on emotion, raw emotion, um, like a sort of Vinnie Paz or a Roberto Duran or a Tyson Fury, on the spur of the moment, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And I don't doubt that Ramirez was hurt. You know, the, 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 he probably, he, we well, may have thought that his eye socket was broken, in which case he's entitled to bail out because you don't, don't want to lose a sight in one eye. Israel Vasquez died last week. Okay, Israel Vasquez is a guy who, if you know anything about his career, he had four fights, hellish fights, with um, with um, Marquez. Um, and it was Rafael Marquez, not one, one, one Manuel Marquez, it was the, the brother. But he ended up losing an eye. Uh, Israel Vasquez did because of the it was a the culmination of the injuries he'd, stu- he'd suffered throughout his career, especially in those Marquez fights. So Rabisi is entitled to say, "I'm out of here. Forget this. I'm, I'm gone." Um, but of course, you will. People will blow raspberries at you, and you're a quitter. You know all the armchair fans. And yeah, he did quit. He did quit. He, we'll, we'll say that he tapped out if you want to use the MMA uh, language, but. But yeah, it's going to be difficult for him to come back from this. I mean, he's 30 years old, so he's not ancient. Um, he's been a world champ. He was the WBO feather champ, and he, he held that belt for some time. I hope he's made some, some decent money. 
Um, whether top rank will want to continue with him or not, I don't know. But for Rafael Espinosa, this was a fantastic win. He, he bettered the first victory um, over Ramirez. And I guess he's now going to go looking for unifications. But a very, very strange ending to a, an odd fight that, in my opinion, Rabisi Ramirez was winning. You know, after five rounds, I think I had him 4-1 up. Um, maybe you could make a case for him being 3-2 up, but there's no way there's no way that he wasn't winning that, that fight, I don't think. Um, Espinosa, in the first three or four rounds, simply wasn't doing enough, and he certainly wasn't landing enough. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I mean, there's a, there's a reason why world title fights are 12 rounds. Um, so, yeah, disappointing from Ramirez. Congratulations to Espinosa, another Mexican champ, doing well. They have this endless conveyor belt of Mexican champions, don't they? But can Ramirez come back? I don't know. For Espinosa, yeah, unifications definitely. And at six foot one for a featherweight, um, and the, the fact that he likes to come forward, he fights, he doesn't fight, well, he does fight tall occasionally, but he's, like I say, he punches on the way in. He's very aggressive. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fun to watch. He's fun to watch. So what did you think of this fight? Tell me what, what your take on it is. You know, we're, we're just speculating. We I suppose maybe it'll come out in the post-fight wash like it normally does. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think about Ramirez. Do you think he should carry on? Do you think this is a, his, his sort of no mass is going to stick with him? Has he got to go out and prove himself again? I guess he does. Uh, and who would you like to see Espinosa fight in the future? Let me know. Anyway. Thank you, as always, for your time, for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it and you could hit the like button, that would be a big help. And also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe because that helps us out a great deal. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a good weekend or are having a good weekend because it's not over yet. And I will, of course, speak to you later. Bye for now.